Hey Isaac, you should like make a video, man. Do do be da ba up ship it bow. This one's in the bag. Okay, here we are. So I guess we're I'm just gonna just jump in and get this going so I'm, I'm gonna be going through a couple of things here and this is definitely not this is definitely not gonna be a super structured video so um pardon me if there is just going to be stuff that comes up as I do it uh for example like this one uh loot on interact auto loot you want that on show enemy names NPC names well, objects you typically want my name. Uh, we'll do simple. That makes it easier. Like that. All right. I'll see now. We can see stuff here. All right. So I've kind of I've gone through and set some stuff up with your um, character. Um, and then yeah, I guess let's just start there. So something that's new to Guild Wars that um, you may have lightly had when you first started. Um, is uh, is anyways is these templates so i also organize i i filled these templates out and i organized them to make a little more sense for you so this first one let's actually rename this and this is going to be healer man healer man So you can just scroll that and it'll tell you this is your Healer Man guy build. And this one here is your DPS Duder. Do that. So technically, if you want, well not technically, just in actuality, you can scroll over this and this is going to show you the main stats that you have. Um, yours, and you, you see it just has four. Yeah, it just shows the stats. Um, so I guess just like your quick disclaimer for both of these. Um, they are not best in slot for everything and i guess some of that is what i'll be explaining and what the consequences are in here that's just it's not best in slot just both to make it more affordable to you and then also for whenever you play this game in a lot of cases it just isn't going to be needed um so i guess i'll start with this one first so dps duder um this is just all berserkers gear which is just power precision and ferocity and so what those stats do is power is basically your base attack damage um, and it scales linearly so the power you get is just flat out added to your base attack damage so if you want to find out what your base attack damage is you just sum up everything you have that has power on it so that's going to be 124 um, and then each of your attacks will have maximum damage, which will then be added on top of your power, etc. Errata. Um, precision um, is crit chance, and ferocity is crit damage. So um, those are add to a number, which then I think equals, which then affects a percentage. Right. So you see, there's your precision and your ferocity. Why is your ferocity? displayed in a weird way um but increases critical chance by a flat number which then you can see the percentage for um so then i bought you with laurels these two rings which are berserker stuff and then also i got you these things here now um this drained out your laurels for the most part i believe let's see how many you have we can we can check your wallet here using this fun button um, you have 19, and 19 is just not a lot left. You get those from the dailies, though, and I'm still logging in to get your daily rewards, so you'll slowly replenish them. Um, so this is a longbow and great sword, um, which, by the way, you have these two cool skins, which I pulled from your inventory, both because you have the transmutation things to do them again, and then also just to clear up inventory space in your bank, because that was something that was needed. Now, um... Doop. These, this is a build that you can largely just auto attack in, but you're actually not doing too much right now because I forgot to change your skill template. 
Now you have let's read no knees. I want to heal. Name this one. I want to kill. So I also updated your build templates and I matched them up with the corresponding equipment. So for one is gonna be your heal and two is gonna be for your damage. So now we're gonna kill. So now we have now that we have these damage traits aligned, we should be seeing see we can see some we, we, we definitely take things down faster. Dude. Sorry. It is just satisfying to auto attack things as your ranger, it's really nice compared to this this is definitely fun. Um I think that your two does a lot, and then your hunter shot also does a lot. So let's do an auto attack real quick. So these are the different meta build for the for the rangers, which if you which I'll probably include these links just so if you want to do it. So the build that I'm using for your DPS is not from a fractal or dungeon or a raid or a strike build, which means that this is not the most powerful, and that doesn't mean that like it's a weak one. It just means that it's it's not the most powerful because it doesn't use this specialization called the Soul Beast one. Which, to be honest, I know that the reason you don't have that is because you kind of had to choose between two of them, and I had told you to do the Druid because it's the support. Which honestly will be better for you when you're doing elevated content, simply because the, ro the rotation is going to be easier, and you'll see that as we get there. So then that means that the build you have is this basic Ranger one that's come from the open world one, and you can see that it is rated highly on the open world one. Oh, whoops, I hit my keyboard there. It is rated highly on the open world one, it's just not going to be a top DPS. Um, now these pets here, you do not have the same pets. Um, I just didn't do that. Um, that's probably something that I can maybe hunt down and if I have some time to do, I'll get you these pets. Um, but I just picked the ones that you had that were pretty good. I think that really the only thing that comes with the pets though is are the abilities and so this one looks like the highest amount of vulnerability that you can get on a pet and then also condition removal which is nice um but you'll need to get those pets if you want that this will have some useful pet um variants and some skill variants um i would really only get into these if you feel like you have skills that you're not using or that don't really feel intuitive to you you can come and look here to see why they're useful and maybe you're using it wrong or you can just see ones that you can you know replace um there's some variants here to the specializations but you won't really use these these are description of the items you'll have see i got those um this you'll get be able to get when you have more laurels this we will probably wait on this is going to be expensive and i don't know if you'll you'll really need it here is Ascended Berserker gear. You have Exotic, which is pretty close to what you can get. So these are the Great Bow and the Great Sword. You have, um, you do not have the same runes, um, because they're a little bit expensive. So I got you discount versions of them. And then also one of them, you just already had a rune equipped, the sig sig Sigil of Hydromancy. The damage frozen chills them when you swap to this weapon while in combat. Um, so that just means that like it slows them down when you swap weapons, and it's not that be fun for you. Um, and then this Bloodlust one has the thing where you get extra power, which for how you'll probably be playing the game. When you're doing stuff like strikes and stuff like that, sigils like these are horrible because you're killing like one enemy and you're done when you kill that one enemy. But when you're going around and you're killing a lot of small creatures and you're doing open world content, this is nice. And, and that this is what you're ultimately going to be using your DPS build for, you know, just going through completing story missions and open world content. So this will ultimately allow you to do that. I think I gave you this alternate room of vampirism. Let me double check. Yeah. Um, oh, your bear is just killing something right now. That's super cool. Um, so it gives you power and vitality and increases your maximum health and restores a large amount of health upon kill Which is again um, For being a solo dude going through and doing things It'll just make life easier for you not the best DPS, but it, it makes things convenient um, This here has food you don't need this um, 
this is really for min maxing and you're not really going to use that a lot um, your main sources of damage are maul rapid fire and barrage so those are two are from your great bow and this one is on your great sword um, and so that's really good um, because let's see that has a three and a four and a half cooldown and then that's 16 and that's eight um, so you're, you're, not, you're not on any like big long cooldowns like the strength of the pack with 75 sentence uh, ugh, seconds not sentences this has defense um, but the main reason for that is simply because your your great sword has counter attack a lot of other classes don't have that and honestly the best thing you can do for defense is just movement with evading and stuff like that um, which is just a skill stealing of the game that you go up upon um, and you can see that as recent as March of this year, um, it is one of the best core builds in the game um, for general open world. Um, so feel confident in this. This is a pretty good one. And um, you may have some things that feel rough to do or some content that is hard to do, but maybe that's just because the content itself is hard to do. Do do. Here, let me kill this salamander drake. And then let's get out of here. Oh. Mm. Mm. Let's get up here. Alright, we should be good. Sup, brown bear. C can't you name your pets? Yeah, you can. Um. What do we want to name him? Let's see, this guy is. What are you? Arcus. Um. Let's just name it Dumble. Dwarf, because it's like Dumbledore, but he's a dwarf, so it's a Dumbledore. And so I just wanted to cover that over you real quick because I changed that a little bit. Um, and anyways, I guess let's see these. Increases the ferocity of you and your pet, so that's just a good passive to have. You and your pet gain quickness and super speed. Alright, so the super speed here you'll feel the most, but what's important here is actually the quickness. Quickness increases your skills and action, and that does not mean that this recharge is slower oh man i'll have to wait for the cooldown to actually show you what it means is that you actually complete the skill faster the animation is done faster um this gets you protection and barrier while breaking out of stuns so that's just a stun break which is nice um and then this is gives you ferocity this gives you a lot of ferocity it gives you 12 seconds which is really nice which again is just going to increase your crit damage so if you know that you're about to just like bump up stuff and you want to just do damage um that's going to be good um and let's see this is off cooldown okay so let's see this is how long it takes me to go through your four skills we do not have quickness applied and then we just have to wait for the cooldown oh look at you little guy running i love you dumble dwarf okay um all right and let's go and so you can see how much quicker we're able to go through all of those. Um, so if you really need to just grind out some damage, or you're really in like crunch mode with damage, I'd probably activate Strengths of the Path, then do Quickening Zypher, and then you literally can just pop out all your stuff. You can see when I, uh, and that's, I guess that's just another example. When I don't have quickness and I just like run through it, I, I skip skills because I don't have the time to do it. And that's really going to be it for this. Um, the DPS build really is meant to just be a simple one, so I shouldn't have to spend much more time on it. Let's go to the fun one, which is the Druid. So, the Druid adds a new thing, which is this, what's it called? Celestial Force? Oh, what's it called? Astral Force. And then you can go into a Celestial Avatar, which gives you new skills. Um, so... You can go through and read these, um, but I'm just going to give you a high level overbuild of what this thing is. By the way, I had to buy all new weapons for you for this, and so the cheapest ones were actually these winter ones. Um, so if you want to, just enjoy the fact that you have all candy cane weapons for this thing. It's kind of it's kind of fun. I need to sneeze. <coughs> Woo, bless me. So there are, in general two types of supports um, in Guild Wars. There is Druid and everybody else. 
so Druid was basically the very first boon support that they added into the game. So because of um, each class having its own heal skill, that meant that things kind of went differently than like, wow, we, we don't need a dedicated healer. You can just be good at the game and DPS fast enough and hopefully escape needing to have heals. But then classes like the Druid changed that because so what you saw with your build earlier with like equipment quickness and fury and those things you are just going to have the ability to give those boons to other people and an important stat that we build on this character is concentration which increases your boon duration so actually here we're at a total of 80 percent uptime and so what that means is so for here for this protection where it says that it's for five and a half seconds you do it longer or maybe that is the time with um with it applied to it here we, we can do a test here we do the skill okay yeah so that is the additional time that you have but so that means that like for here your fury is for like 18 seconds long which is a long amount of time you have like 18 seconds of swiftness um that would be almost half that'd almost be like nine seconds and so that means that you have skills and traits that have you do a lot of positive boons um, and then you have the concentration to make it more powerful. And so the Druid was one of the first classes that did that. Since then, we've had a couple of classes that do it differently, or I guess that are in support of that. Um, but oftentimes, just due to how things are, people people want to have a Druid there. Specifically because um, these Druid, these spirits, they apply to a large amount of people. Um, you'll see there they apply to 10 target and so you can buff a full squad of people with these um, which is just there no other class does that it's really great um, just in case you don't remember um, these will teleport the spirits to you so then let's say you're in a strike or you're in a raid and then you move you can just do these things again and it will teleport to you uh, and then also let's not forget big chunk there we go. Sup, big chunk. Um, so Druid is primarily a boon support. Uh, then we also have healing power slotted with this um, so that your heals also do more. And so you have in your staff skill, you will have some things that have innate healing. And then also when you apply regen, you will do more regen. Um, the other stat that we have here is toughness. Now, let me see. Uh, is that what I want? Nope. Nope. I'm just going to be trying to to keep this nice and fancy. I hid the menu bar up top. Oh, dude, this is just like looking bad on me. Uh, I hid the menu bar up top. Oh, we found the auto run key. Um, so I'm trying to open the black lion right now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yep. By the way, I just need you to know, they added a, a manatee in here. That thing is glorious. Um, good luck, Moa, killing that thing. Oh my goodness, I closed the thing I was trying to look at, and I have to find the button again. It's off, it's off, okay. So let's look at the things. So we want concentration, non-negotiable. We want healing, non-negotiable. And we want exotic armor. And we'll look at the chest to make it easy. So this is why I got you the givers, which is ten gold per armor, which is decent, which, which is pretty impossible, pretty high. Um, this is the cheapest of the options that you have, and ultimately um, the one you wanted either wouldn't be here, like the one that specifically you'd have to craft which would be pretty expensive, which would have power, which all that does, as I said earlier, increases your attack, which you're being playing a support, so that's like not that necessary. Though you could get another one here that would be way more expensive, but would give you condition damage, which actually would be good. It would be a really great hybrid on this thing, but you saw that's 40 per, and you just don't have the cash for that. And then also that's a little bit of a, a higher skill ceiling for you, so that just wouldn't be good. So anyways, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. This is showing that I just 
see I'm just jumping in doing this video but I'm okay with that so just quick recap from what I've done so far um, your primary parts of your armor are healing power and concentration those are really important you have an extra stat as toughness instead of power which the reason I have that is just because that helps you to negate damage which is probably more useful to you as a newer player um, and that's true of most of your armor for these ones here I did get the power um, so just because you can't really wanted to have some there and then you don't have the um, laurels to get the necessary best in slot but I thought that the best in slot was better for your DPS you'll you'll be just fine here with the lower concentration you had two of these ascended rings which were close enough <laughs> so we kept those um, and then these ones here we kind of just kept as well um, it'll make up for your lack of power overall and that's why you look at this and it shows like a variety of stats your sigils here are not exactly what you want um, let's go down to the gear section here because you should be having things that give you concentration in your amulets and you should be having things that give you a heal allies when you get a critical hit because we have the slight variance in armor you weren't at a high enough boon duration so i swapped out the heal um sigil for the concentration one um that both saved you money because the weapon came with it and also the boon duration is just useful to you um okay and i think that that goes over your gear overall and things that you need to know um if you play this a lot and you end up needing to improve things this am this amulet rings accessory section is where that's primarily going to happen um and then also when you do that and you get your boon duration up you can upgrade your sigils because you can't go past 100 boon duration so then uh quick things you just need to know about this astral force you get from healing and damaging people and you get these skills calls down energy and a target to heal people so this is nice um you've got the seed of life so i'm going to seeds that heal and cleanses nearby allies when it blossoms so that's going to be a time thing um and then the rest of the skills i didn't have time to go over but i'm about to read something that has it so it's fine so i guess now let's go to the build thing healing drew is a meta defining support build that multiple damage buffs to 10 players um, this has the same thing where I just didn't get the pets for you, forgive me, um, but you'll be fine. Um, what these pets are for is to get break bar damage, um, which is okay. That is, people aren't going to know that you're not doing it unless you're doing, like, high level raids. So you can kind of get away with just having these two Moa birds. The reason why I chose them is because, uh... Come on. This one, it has a thing that lets you grant fury, and this one has a thing that gives protection. So, um, that just helps you to further do your boons in case you, like, just need it out of the blue. So, this has axe in the war, axe slash warhand, war horn on one, and then it has staff on the other. The reason why you have the axe is just because it's your best long range damage. Um, what's actually more important is this war horn because it has this call of the wild, um, which lets you get fury and might up. And one of the main purposes of your build is to keep these 25 stacks of might along with permanent fury and regeneration. Um, and this is called the war horn. Um, so primarily what you're going to be doing is you'll actually be in the celestial avatar a lot so you'll be in celestial avatar pop out do your worn horn and then you'll go back and you'll be spamming staff skills um so this, you got your spirits blah 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 this has the same thing with the dps where if you want to do different pets and you have for different reasons <gasps> oh hey dude it's the juvenile red moa nice um i predicted this um do you have the jungle stalker you're the one with the fury right now let's see do we have jungle stalker fern hound i 
guess you don't have jungle stalker. That's okay. Oh, but we can do fern hound. That gets you extra regeneration. That's probably. Um, okay, I guess that makes more sense. Um, specialization. This has this has a lot more wall of text for you to go through. You don't really need to deal with this, though. You should know that there's one modification that I made to the build. Um, so normally you're supposed to have the Celestial Shadow, which grants super speed and stealth when leaving Celestial Avatar. So that's when you pop in and you pop out. And you are going to be doing this probably every 30 seconds or so maybe. Um, so that is a decent bit of super speed and occasional stealth. But um, I thought that what would be more useful is this one down here where it reduces the duration of movement and pairing conditions. So cripple, immobilize, and chilled. Um, it reduces that by a third. But then what's more important is when you don't have any of those conditions, your movement speed is increased by 30. And so do you want to have super speed every now and again, or do you just want to have a permanent um, movement speed increase? I thought that that would be better for you. They have these variants for if you want to be doing more DPS, but that doesn't matter to us. Um, I think I already went over, yeah, I already largely went over the equipment with you. Consumables. You might want to use these if you if you really get into Guild Wars and you're doing raids or you're trying to do like speed clearing. Um, the consumables would be nice, and these aren't on. They're honestly not too expensive. But if you're just playing the game casually, don't bother with this. Um, so let's get into the two things you need to do. Um, so your class is going to be pretty similar to my heel shape where you basically have a couple of skills where it's like this is important use these off cooldown and then after that you kind of just do whatever um so your main job is maintaining 25 stacks of might you are uniquely equipped to do this with grace of the land great increased damage output to allies within the radius of your celestial avatar so that means that when they're nearby when you're in that mode you're giving them these um stacks of might at the start of fight and any time Celestial Avatar is available, you should be in Celestial Avatar um, and do the following might sharing rotation. So this means go into it, Lunar Impact, Rejuvenating Tide, Seeds of Life. Um, lunar Rejuvenating Seeds of Life. Um, which as you'll see, you only have five skills. So you basically just do these three, these, these middle three ones. Um, and then you can kind of ignore these ones on the ends. Well, you don't have to ignore it. You can just use them when they're needed. Like, for example, this one gives you stability, which is really good if you know that something's coming up that's going to knock you back. And then this one, I guess, is just, this is just a spam. Which, honestly, I was using this one earlier when I was doing a strike mission because, um, it's honestly not that bad. It, it does a lot of healing. Um, it does a, a little more than this. Um, but the seeds of life, um, they actually want you to, if you want to get crazy with it, they want you to have it launch, be the last thing that you do so that when it explodes, you're already out of celestial form and that healing gives you that astral fun time juice to get back into celestial. Um, so, yeah, so then after, in addition to being in the mode and scanning, uh, spamming those things, they want you to do Call of the Wild for the Warhorn and that will top off Might and Regeneration and Fury. Um, and for healing, um, this sublime coverage comes from your staff along with Ancestral Grace. And then Call of the Wild, which as we said, you're already spamming when you can. Um, so I guess let's just show you your staff skills really quick. So this one here is actually a beam. And so anybody who is inside of that beam will be healed. Um, so this is probably your best when you just have nothing to do. Spam that. Um, your astral, astral Wisp is just a short orb that you can send to, to do healing. Um, astral Grace does pet protection, but that's okay. What's nice about Astral Grace is that it is a short range teleport. Um, and so there's a lot of things where you need to move. And so that'll do it. Ooh. This skill will immobilize people, and then it will also cleanse immobilizing conditions from your friends. And then here you have an energy barrier, which when you go through, gives you regen. 
you see all of those are pretty straightforward and, and nothing really complex though this did bring up one thing that I'm glad because I can really forgot about it um, but I enabled a setting which I'll show you how to undo it here uh, ground targeting I enabled this to be fast range you had it previously on normal so what that means is when you I'm holding this key right now and this shows where the skill is going to be and on release it does the skill now what is done normally let's go down here normal is like you do this and it just holds it and I have to click to activate the skill which I don't know it's just confusing for me sometimes and it's a bit faster to be able to do fast with range indicator um, that the only thing that that can be iffy with is if you have any of these like F4 um, skills or something like that that have ground targeting because then you get into like a little bit of like um, like for example when you're there's a boss fight where you press the minus key and then you have a, ki a skill that lets you teleport like this skill here um, and it's kind of weird to like stop and hold the minus key and do it so that's like kind of weird but I don't really encounter that normally at all and I think that it just makes it it, it just cuts down on your action keys which are nice um, I think that that's really the basics of all you need to know um, just right here let me um, let me see if I can get into celestial mode get enough for, come on I want to go I want to show so you'll be able to you'll be constantly when you're in a group of people you'll basically be constantly topped off on astral juice because you'll just be healing people all the time so you won't have to do any of this like lame stuff that I'm doing here um, but then you'll just pop into celestial mode you'll pop these three skills just to keep people healed and to give them buffs and when you're out you pop that um, and then people will just have these buffs for a long time and you'll see that these are like 10 11 13 seconds um, so you really do have time to cycle through stuff um, and that's really all you do you'll be surprised how how much how quickly once you get it going and you'll be able to just do stuff like spam your heal skills and stuff like that um and i bet you right now man i'm just gonna i'm just screw it man um go back where's it hiding here we go where's it, where's it gonna bring this back you don't get pretty graphics anymore looking for group you need three here let's actually So this video, I'm, I'm rambling and I'm talking a lot. Just it isn't the best, but I think I think it'll it'll be somewhat helpful for you. And then hopefully, I can just show you an example here. Um, this boss fight that we're going to be doing here is going to be hella easy. Um, the boss literally just like stands there, um, and we even get to like just teleport to the boss because people have already done the mechanics. So we're going to pre-summon our spirits. Um, says he can DPS if I like, but I don't want to, I don't want to go. Um. We do our ready check. Um. Yeah, so he's just going to stand there. And he's going to be applying some conditions, but we have like all the ability to condition cleanse as we need. Um, so now we're going to go here, we're going to do our skills. And I actually going to time the two. Boom. Okay, and then as soon as the two finishes, I get out. I'm gonna go on and I do call the wild. And then while I wait to be able to switch weapons again, I'm going to do spam attacks. And now doop, now can I swap? Pop my skills off here. Then I go back into celestial mode so I can maintain. I got moved away from the group, so I need to get back. 
back, so it's sort of a signal. Pop leech seal back. And call the wild is back up again. So we do that. So you see here, I am the source of this 20 thing of light armor. And we are doing a wonderful job of going through this boss. We have now three minutes to come before we get the max out of time. And all of my spirits are still up right now, so I don't know if I summon them. Call of the Wild should be off for now, so we use that. And then we just go in here. Do these. Let's see. Call the block. Keep it up by ice and heal. And so actually right now we have a Chronomancer who's giving us who is giving us like Lord help me. The skill's called Alacrity, no um, which makes our skills go on cooldown faster. So this call of the wild was being done every like seven seconds. Um, we didn't later. need to always do it off of cooldown because you see, we give the fury for like 20 seconds. Um, so there's just not a need to do that. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm giving you any new information anymore. I think I'm just repeating things. Ultimately, you're going to just have to like read the links that I'm going to put in the chat. Um, and then and we'll do you. Read the links that I put in the chat, and then you're just going to have to try it out yourself. Um, and it shouldn't really be bad at all. So let me just, I'm just going to end, I guess, with showing you stuff that I did in your inventory so that you can understand. So, 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 so. Oh, dude, this Noble's Folly is nice, by the way. This is a good option that you have. Um, also loads pretty quickly, too. Bank's right here. So your bank is stuffed because I moved as much from, my, from your inventory as I can, just so that's nice and clean. You have some stuff here that's up to you, but it's probably in your benefit to work through. Um, for example, these experience scrolls, you have two level 80 boosts. You are just not going to use some of these. The 41s and the 50, the 50 and the 60, I'd maybe keep, but you can maybe ditch these. Um, and then these boosters, you should start using them. Um, honestly, um, I guess I'll show you what I have after this. Um, you might want to get some new bank tabs. It can be really useful. And then also, you, sh you should really consider using the those level 80 boosts. You're just going to very quickly tire of the level grind for these things. And you have them, and that shared inventory slot is really nice. Um, I, I would really consider using those level 80 boosts. Um, and then... Do, 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 do because when you use them, you're gonna get a shared inventory slot back. Um, yeah, hi. Um, and, that, and that shared inventory slot can be useful and nice. So I guess I'm gonna show you a couple of things again real quick, because I guess this is just a, a catch-all video now. Congratulations, Isaac. Um, how long am I making this? Oh man, I have been recording for too long. Um, I need to go make lunch soon. Um, so, um, there is a thing that you can do daily to get um, gold and support marks, which I am doing for you when I can because the gold is nice and you can use these support marks to get this nice stone skin infusion, which might be fun for you to have and it, and it just looks cool. Um, I'm also logging in to get your daily rewards because um, then that results overall in about, I think it's like 50 gold, liquid gold per month. So anyways, this, this is my bank tab and I have space that I don't use. So I, I, I effectively to a degree, I, I bought things that I didn't need. I, I like having the space and I don't regret it, but that is a true thing. The thing is though, as you play the game, you're just going to amass things like skins and the boosters and items for crafting legendaries and stuff like that that you just don't want to keep stored. Um, so you might want to upgrade your bank tab if you plan on playing multiple characters. If you end up just like really playing your ranger and you're just comfortable with that, dude, ig ignore the bank. Um, just use a couple of those boosters like I was recommending just so you have room for some of the dumb things like 
the captured light, but you, you don't really need that much space for it. Um, I guess that's really it. Um, I have some... I have permanent harvesting tools for all of my things. I don't think that you really need that. I think that you'll be just fine. Um, and then the rest of the stuff, yeah, like you really will just acquire as you need. For example, the masteries for the pets. The only pet you have right now is the raptor, which is actually just fine. I have the griffin, but this is this is really overkill for everything you need. The raptor is basically the best mount, and I have a skill here that um, lets me do a longer jump, but that's it. Um, and that's going to be, I think that is like the next thing you get. Let me see. No, that's the canyon jumping. But that's not hard at all to get. And you only need that if you're doing Path of Fire content. And it will be inside of the Path of Fire content to unlock that. So that'll make it very really easy. Um, you can grind for these extra skills for the pets. But they're, to be honest, they're not really needed. This one here just makes my endurance recharge faster for a couple of seconds. This one makes the life pool of my pet equal to mine. Um, this one makes me jump to my pet. And this one makes me stealth for three seconds. Which I know you're probably thinking now, as you use your pet, you don't really need those. You just need to jump over. Um, yeah, and I, I guess that's really it. I guess actually looking at your account, you really have most of what you need and everything. I think that a lot of other things, if I was getting them for you, I'd actually be like taking parts of the game away from you, content that would be fun for you to do. Um, so yeah, I think that you're in a great position. Um, thank you for watching.